let's dive in. Jeremiah's prophetic ministry extends not only to Judah, but also to foreign nations, which have been Judah's oppressors. It's interesting, too, just as a, a side as we're getting started, you guys, that, uh, you know, God uses these nations. You know, it's like, I wonder sometimes, you know, we get in our minds that you have to be right with God to be used by God or somehow, you know, righteous to be used by God. And, and, uh, and here's nations that are pagan, pagan nations, and God uses them in, uh, in some surprising ways. Um, over the course of scripture it just keeps bringing me back to the fact that um you don't have to be all that <laughs> to be all that great to be used by god and uh and the other part that i, I keep wondering about there's a couple things and i think we'll see it tomorrow and, you know he gives hope in some places to these uh pagan nations uh, there's like uh, 70 verses of of woe to you and then tomorrow i think it's i think it's tomorrow or the next day that we're going to see him offer a little one line of hope and and it makes me think you know there's uh there's hope for every single person that uh that they're gonna have opportunity to encounter god in a good way and be used by him in ways that are surprising but okay anyway jeremiah's prophetic ministry extends not only to judah but also to foreign nations which have been judah's oppressors judah's most recent threat has been from egypt but the time is near for Egypt to reap its just desserts, its reward. Here, Jeremiah's warning to Egypt, as well as to the Philistines, who will be Egypt, Egypt's last victim in this era of power? This is the word the Lord of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the nations, concerning Egypt. This is the message against the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was defeated by Karkush, Karkeshmet, Karkimish, 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 on the Euphrates River, and Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, in the fourth year of Jos Josachim, Josiah's Josiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah. Prepare your shields, both large and small and march out for battle. Harness the horses, mount the steeds, take your positions with helmets on, polish your spears, put on your armor. What do I see? They are terrified. They are retreating. Their warriors are defeated. They flee in haste. Without looking back, there is terror on every side, declares the Lord. The swift cannot flee, nor the strong escape. In the north, by the river Euphrates, they stumble and fall. Who is this that rises like the Nile, like rivers of surging waters? Egypt rises like the Nile, like rivers of surging waters. She says, I will rise and cover the earth. I will destroy cities and their people. Charge, you horses. Drive furiously, you chariots. March on, you warriors, men of Cush and Put, who carry shields, men of Lydia, who draw the bow. But that day belongs to the Lord, the Lord Almighty, a day of vengeance for vengeance on his foes. The sword will devour till it is satisfied, till it has quenched its thirst with blood. For the Lord, the Lord Almighty, will offer sacrifice in the land of the north by the river Euphrates. Go up to Gilead and get balm, virgin daughter Egypt. But you try many medicines in vain, there is no healing for you. The nations will hear of your shame, your cries will fill the earth, one warrior will stumble over another, and both will fall down together. This is the message the Lord spoke to Jeremiah the prophet about the coming of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to attack Egypt. Announce this in Egypt and proclaim it in Migdal, proclaim it also in Memphis and Tappanese. Take your positions and get ready, for the sword devours those around you. Why will your warriors be laid low? They cannot stand, for the Lord will push them down. They will stumble repeatedly. They will fall over each other. They will say, get up. Let us go back to our own people and our native lands, away from the sword of the oppressor. There they will exclaim, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is only a loud noise. He has missed his opportunity. As surely as I live, declares the king, whose name is the Lord Almighty, 
One will come who is like Tabor among the mountains, like Carmel by the sea. Pack your belongings for exile, you who live in Egypt, for Memphis will be laid waste and lie in ruins without inhabitant. Egypt is a beautiful heifer, but a gadfly is coming against her from the north. The mercenaries in her ranks are like fattened calves. They too will turn and flee together. They will not stand their ground, for the day of disaster is coming upon them, the time for them to be punished. Egypt will hiss like a fleeing serpent as the enemy advances in force. They will come against her with axes like men who cut down trees. They will chop down her forest, declares the Lord, dense though it might be. They are more numerous than locusts. They cannot be counted. Daughter Egypt will be put to shame, given into the hands of the people of the north. The Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, I am about to bring punishment on Ammon, God of Thebes, on Pharaoh, on Egypt, and her gods and her kings, and on those, oops, on those who rely on Pharaoh. I will give them into the hands of those who want to kill them. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his officers. Later, however, Egypt will be inhabited as in times past, declares the Lord. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, Israel. I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant. For Brian. I am with you. Oh. There's the Lord. Okay. <laughs> Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will dis discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah, the prophet concerning the Philistines, before Pharaoh attacked Gaza. This is what the Lord says. See how the waters are rising in the north. They will become an overflowing tor uh, torrent. They will overflow the land and everything in it, the towns and those who live in them. The people will cry out. All who dwell in the land will wail. And the sound of the hooves of the galloping steeds at the noise of the enemy chariots and the rumbling of their wheels. Parents will not turn to help their children and their hands will hang limp. For the day has come to destroy all the Philistines and to remove all survivors who could, be, <clears throat> who could help Tyre and Sidon. The Lord is about to destroy the Philistines, the remnant from the coast of Kaptor. Gaza will shave her head in mourning, and Ashkelon will be silenced. You remnant of, on the plain, how long will you cut yourselves? Alas, sword of the Lord, how long till you rest? Return to your sheath, cease and be still. But how can it rest when the Lord has commanded it, when he has ordered it to attack Ash Ashkelon in the coast? Yep, there you go. It's, it's this kind of stuff right here at Linfield that I was kind of reflecting on uh, at the beginning. It's like, there's a few of these that, that come for, you know, you can destroy all the nations mm -hmm. which I scatter you. I will not completely destroy you. You know, so there's this like all these verses of, of, of wrath and warning and things are going to go bad, but I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to wipe you out. I'll discipline you uh, only in due measure. I, I'm not going to let you go unpunished. Let's be clear. Let's be let's be crystal clear. You're you're going to get punished, <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to completely destroy you. And and uh, it's those kinds of phrases that I just uh, I marvel at because God's got a plan. I sometimes wonder, you know, in seeing stuff like that, uh, you know, what exactly is His plan? in uh in saving people not just in our day not just now uh but in the end you know and uh yeah, i look forward to seeing this thing unpacked uh in real life in real time and we are and we are and we are which is amazing 
Uh, why was it important for Jew for the Jews exiled in Babylon to know what Babylon great that that Babylon's great power would soon fall? I got to believe that to a degree it would give them hope that uh, you know that their day that their day is coming that they will be able to return. Yeah. But um, yeah, because without without hope. Well, yeah, and the Jews, the Jews thought, you know, um, once they made it to their promised land, uh, you know, that was kind of the end of it all. You know, that was God has has declared it. This is our promised land. And when we make it, we'll make it here. And then all of a sudden they're exiled. They're driven all from that. And so they're 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 waiting to get back to that land that mm. was promised to them. And so it's uh, when, you know, to hear that the Babylonians that will take them captive and hold them out of their land is going to fall, then they give hope to say, okay, I, I'm going back to inherit what God has rightly given us. Yeah. And, you know, and I don't know what it would have been like, but I, I kind of have imagined that, um, you know, it, it, would, it would have to have been, you know, I think back a number of years when I was a kid and thinking about the USSR and wondering what would it have been like to have been Poland, right? I mean, be right next to the USSR and, uh, and, uh, and to have all of the influence that, that communism had in Poland. And then wonder, is there ever a chance that this empire could ever fall? You know, I mean, it just seems so unlikely, right? Or to be Italy during Nazi Germany. You know, is there any possible chance that this empire would ever fall? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I got to think it, it, it's got to be that kind of emotive. The, the, the odds are so great against this superpower, this evil superpower ever not having authority, you know, and then to hear prophetically that the God that they worshiped or has cared for them uh, is not going to allow this power to be in power much longer it had to be, uh, I don't know if important is the right word, but it had to be surreal. I mean, it had to be like, it, really? I mean, is it, is it possible? You know, I'm, I'm not sure that they embraced the, <laughs> the prophet's words in part because it just seems so unreal right it could even it could even possibly be true it'd be like if if a prophet was speaking into uh into you know a little tiny you know area region in china or outside of china that you know like singapore china won't be a problem soon you know uh you know, it's it just hard to get your mind, or, or Hong Kong, right? I guess it'd be Hong Kong. That you, you're not going to have to worry about China anymore. China's going to fall. I mean, it just, it would be that kind of, how could that ever be kind of a, a thing, you know? Right. And, you know, and the Jews probably thought about it, about Rome too. Like after sure. you know, 80, 70, where Rome, uh, you know, the Jewish wars where Rome completely destroys the temple and oh. scatters the Jews. And, you know, right. they've been scattered since the 19, uh, late 1940s. And so, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, there was that, that hopelessness of we'll never get back to what God has given us. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm sure that being, <clears throat> you know, there was this, that, that group of Jews that when they went away in exile into Babylon, that they, they still had, you know, that, that, that discipline came back and said, okay, we need to get back to God. And once they heard the words of Jeremiah uh, saying that they will fall, you know, that, that remnant of people saying, okay, we, we're back to God. We need to give everything to him that remnant of people are saying, finally, we can go back to our land to worship our God. Um, mm -hmm. 
but uh but you know it's i can i can just see you know it's hard to to picture how can these these huge superpowers fall mm -hmm. and uh, we're it's just little old us <laughs> you know yeah, well, and, you know, Amanda makes a good point, too, because sometimes we look at this from the perspective of, you know, the, you know, the evil empire, you know, the evil Roman Empire and, and what they did. And, and, and it's, uh, it's easy to look past us, at, you know, when we talk about a superpower that we, we like to uh, maybe pride ourselves on being the good guys, right? And, uh, and yet here we sit in, in a similar situation, right? We're sitting on the top of the heap and and what's to prevent the united states from crumbling in the same manner because you know we've talked about it numerous times when you look at uh when you look at the israelites and and they're turning aside and away from god and you know we see a lot of evidence of that in our own country and what's to prevent us from from um from having the same thing happen, you know, because Mark, to your point, this would never happen. This will never happen in the United States. This will never happen in the Roman Empire. This will never happen in the Nazi Germany. I, I worry sometimes about that prideful um, position, you know, and Glenn just, you know, put that out there, you know, pride before the fall. Yeah. Are we kind of precarious right now and not even paying attention to it? Well, and it does seem to your point, Todd, that, uh, that one of the precursors to that is what? It's a, it's a falling away. It's ignoring of. It's a, it's a reliance on our own strength. It's those motifs that seem to be the, the crumbling motifs for these countries, right? It's like yeah. uh, the, the lack of recognition of the, of, the, of the worship of the one true God seems to be uh char chief characteristic and and uh you know it's so it's so really really remarkable how quickly in each of those instances uh where you saw god at least elevated how quickly uh they move from uh real worship to museum worship or you know half heart half-hearted worship or uh, placated postulation towards the things of god it's just uh just a such a quick slope and uh and you know we talk about it we're one generation always away from extinction in christianity and this is our day this is ours right we are at our we're in our moment in history to, on the world stage and uh history has its eye on us you know so yeah. mm -hmm. not i'm not giving up my shot to try to impact this <laughs> world of christ <laughs> A, a, a line from Hamilton. <laughs> I, I recognize that, Mark. <laughs> Anyways. It's not thinly veiled, I guess. Oh, man. I'm judging you now. Judging. <laughs> well, that was a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> uh, why was it important that, uh, that each in instrument of God's wrath uh, take it their, their job, their role seriously? Now, that's an interesting question because in those, I mean, they're they're not they're not taking really God seriously at all. They just want to they just want to conquer and vanquish, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, maybe it's, I answer that. Yeah, maybe it's uh, you know it, the wrath not it wasn't laxed. It wasn't it wasn't lessened because they wouldn't take God as serious if it was lessened i don't i think i think i i don't know it's kind of like um with your children you know you, you oh you, i you know i see i i didn't i didn't think of the question right i i get okay it. go ahead keep going uh, oh i was just i'm, I'm rereading it rereading it i'm like man what is this what is this saying oh i get it. Like, no, yeah, I, don't, I don't want three swats no yeah I want to have a long time out. No, damn. right. Yeah, I get it. Yep. It's like no, you're. This is the punishment. You know, there's a there's a cause and effect here. There's a, you know, consequences and for your actions and and the way you learn is through this. Yeah. And so, you know, I can't. But the you know afterwards, God is. I mean, we'll see it coming up. The the hopefulness. The 
the love, you know, if God didn't love us, um, he wouldn't be, uh, if God didn't love his people, you know, in the Old Testament, us now, he wouldn't discipline uh, as, you know, to the, he wouldn't discipline fully. Mm -hmm. He would be laxed on it. But, but because he loves us so much, uh, and the old, I'm talking about Old Testament uh, Jews, he loves us so much is that he's going to do what he says mm -hmm. so that you know that he's, you know, he is truly going by his word. Like, yep, you are going to have this done. So you can, I don't know, it's more of a trusting in after the punishment has happened. It's like, oh, he says, he does what he says. I can trust in him now more. I don't know. You know, the other thing, and I think we've talked about this before, when we looked at um, when, when judgment came on, on various nations and they would come in and, and wipe everyone out. I mean, women, children, the innocent as well, you know, everybody was um, destroyed. That if you don't, then the certain remnant of the problem can resurface. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's, it's like, I, you know, I'm wondering about that, too. It's like the the crabgrass in my yard. I've got a lot in my yard that looks really good. But right now, the crabgrass is making an appearance in certain areas and it just kind of keeps cropping up and it keeps cropping up because I'm not getting rid of I'm not getting rid of all of it. There's a remnant that's allowed to continue to resurface. Mm -hmm. But on the areas where I completely got rid of it, it doesn't come back. You know, some of us, Todd, would like just crabgrass instead of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Sorry, I totally no, I'm sorry. I ruined your it. point. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Linfield. Thanks for stomping all over my yeah. awesome message there. Aren't you glad I'm back? Uh -huh. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Until then. In what ways does modern society practice some of the same evil and rebellious attitudes that brought on God's punishment for these nations? Wow. Um, Go ahead, Todd. Oh, hey, thanks. Thanks, Angel. Well, I think, you know, we've been talking about it, you know, all along, just the turning away, uh, doing our own thing. We don't, we don't have to follow exactly what God said. It's, ex it's like in the garden. That's not exactly what God said. He kind of meant this, didn't he? So isn't it all right if I just do this? And it's a gradual turning aside, turning away. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Linfield. Well, I, I was just going to say, I think modern... I think modern society is is more selfish than even we see in the Old Testament. Um, I think we we tend to look out for ourselves more. We tend to want um, things that are that are easier and entertaining and and you know uh, and I think that you know some. It's not like sacrificing kids and babies like some of the, the people did in the Old Testament. And it's not like that, but it is a selfishness where we, we, we uh, devour the things that make us feel good and, and make us feel, you know, entertained and, and make it easy. And, and, you know, and those keep on coming back. So why not trust in those? Because they're always around. And, and because of that, you know, we don't need to go and, and help those that are in need, help those that are, you know, poor, the widows, the orphans. We don't need to do that because we're just focused and in, in soaking in all the selfishness uh, of, and our desires. And that, that is a rebellious attitude towards God. And, and I, you know, God is not, uh, I, I don't think he's happy with that at all. Yeah. Um, uh, on the flip side of that, it, and just yeah. out of curiosity, I, can you give me a quick, us a quick report on uh, what happened Saturday at, at the pop-up? At Ruby's? Yeah. Well, do we have a good pop-up pantry? We had a great pop-up pantry there. How much, how many pounds yeah. of food do you think we distributed? 15,000? Uh, well, we, 
we did over, I think it was 210, 215 shares. I can't remember. Oh. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, it was 10,000 pounds. Yeah, it was a lot of food. Lots and lots of, and the cool thing is that there's so many new people there oh. that, um, you know, and so, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. It's, it's, it's the things that, you know, the tangible things that you do in the face of a culture that is selfish, that really shines, you know, and, uh, and when I was living in San Francisco uh, years ago, no, 20 years ago or whatever, uh, it, it felt to me like uh, Christianity was so uh, exciting there because it was, it, was not, uh, it was not just cultural. It wasn't like a cultural Christian milieu. I mean, you were either in or you were not in. And you could tell those who were, were living their lives for Christ and it made me think that, uh, back then it made me think like in places that are darker, the light shines brighter. And, uh, and now over the last, you know, 20 years, it just feels like culturally, uh, we're just getting darker. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're a, a dimly lit culture. And, uh, but the, the importance of our light shining has never been more important you know and how we do that is with words and action right it's like in some ways our modern societies practice some of the same evil well totally i mean we and and a lot of it's not new it's just our our uh our absolute abhorred view of child sacrifice and yet uh, you know I, I wonder how history will uh look at our abortion and what that will mean in the future as they if they look at it will, it, will we be seen as a, a boorish and uh completely you know mm -hmm. selfish uh evil you know i mean those are the words we use of of those child sacrifice stories that we look at at the old testament i just wonder how that will be perceived in future generations um as uh, they evaluate our culture today, you know, this American culture. Uh, and, you know, I, I look at, uh, at the, you know, the issue, the arrogance of our, uh, of our political parties and how they postulate and, and, uh, and it's not, it's not a, a Republican Democrat. That's a, that's a, we are, we are a, we're a proud, arrogant, led nation and have been for generations um and it's just really really amazing to me that uh that we look back and we can see so clearly in others uh lives this this godless uh this really corrupted leadership culture but it's it's easy to it's easy to gloss over that in our own lives yeah it's interesting. Um, I, uh, I was given a book recently of founding fathers prayers. Wow. And, um, <clears throat> and just reading through that, it, uh, it's pretty incredible to, to read some of George Washington's prayers mm -hmm. and just his, I mean, you can feel like you feel like they're so heartfelt mm -hmm. about, God in the nation, God in the states, mm -hmm. and, and that this is this is our God-given right to do this because, you know, God and and then you go to John Adams and and um, and, and it's just a, it's just some amazing uh, prayers. They even have you know it goes all the way up to uh, Abraham yeah, Lincoln and the Declaration of Independence, right? I mean that's him that's, and and Thomas Jefferson was the and benjamin franklin those three oh, bill of rights the bill of rights was oh, yeah. yeah yeah and uh and it's just uh it's just pretty amazing there the i i don't know they were they were very they were very like strict in their prayers and their reading of the scriptures 
uh, for their growth in, in their leadership and history of this country. And, uh, and it's, it's sad that we have all went completely away from that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and just listening to some of their prayers, how this, you know, God help this be an everlasting, an everlasting union. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but it's just pretty amazing to think that this country was set and built on, on prayers of our forefathers, prayers to the God almighty. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Yeah. It'd be great to see that back, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then, even then, there was a, there was corrupting elements to oh, all of that, but there was a sure. unifying, heartfelt thread of of a recognition of the of a humility before a great God that really did do an amazing thing in their lives in their generation for their children and their children's children, and we are the inheritors of that good work. You know, right. What were you going to say, Todd? Well, it was just, you know, it, it's interesting, and I, I think you, you just hit on it, though, Mark, is that, um, you know, even within that, there obviously it wasn't all right, because in order for certain people to prosper, others, you know, I mean, we were still dealing with some slavery at the time. We we're still dealing with encroaching on people's area that they were already here you know I mean so so there there was good and bad that I think came along with it but the thing that strikes me is um, you know I say how did how did it happen how did we fall so far away and it's isn't it a little bit like that uh, you know how do you how do you cook a frog (laughs) you throw them into a pot of water and just gradually turn up the heat right without without them really knowing and I think oftentimes that's the, you know, that's that scheme that the devil seems to come in with is just that very subtle, soft approach to, well, you don't really have to do it like that. It's a, you know, it can relax a little bit on that. You can back off a little bit. It'll be okay. And just that subtle nature of, um, you know, infiltration mm-hmm. into belief systems. You know, when you said infiltration uh, and subtlety, the uh, the book Screw Tape Letters uh, came yeah. to mind by Lewis. I think you probably have all, or many of you have read Screw Tape Letters, but it's the the story of the demons, uh, dis, uh, their their discussion about how to lead people astray, and and the subtlety and uh, nuance, and uh, is kind of their approach in that in that uh, treatise. Uh, let's, uh, let's spend a couple moments in prayer and close our time together. Uh, let Bill lead us off. I'll close us. All right. <clears throat> oh, Lord, we, uh, we humbly come before you as, as the God of, of all creation and uh, God of uh, the universe and our our God, Lord, that, uh, that we can come to personally and uh, have a relationship with you, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you for being our Savior. And I thank you for dying on that cross for us, Lord, and, and coming out of that tomb so that we could have life with you, Lord. And uh, Lord, I pray that, uh, that when times of, um, of trouble come, when times of of when the light is dimly showing in the world around us, Lord, that we can be a beacon, that we can be the lighthouse, that uh, through you, Lord, that we can have our light shine so bright and uh, that that people will come to know you as their savior so that their light may shine as well. And Lord, we just, uh, we just ask for, for your guidance and, we thank you for your hand of mercy, grace, and truth on us all. And Lord, just, uh, I just pray that you will keep us uh, uni- unified together as we, Lord, we represent you, as we represent you on this, on this place called Earth <laughs> and this area called the Brainerd Lakes area. Lord, let us, uh, let us represent you well and not turn away from you. Mm. 
And Lord, too, that um, as Chris pointed out in the in the chat a moment ago, the the slow fade that can so easily come where we just drift. And and my prayer is that um, you'll work within each of our hearts and and not allow that to happen, Father. I don't want to slip away from you, but I know sometimes I do. I know that there are times when I get distracted by things that uh, really aren't important, but um, it's so easy to do, it seems like. And so, Father, I just I just ask for all of us today, and as Linfield talks about being lights, that, that each one of us will just turn, turn to you, move closer to you, Lord, um, that we can receive the guidance that we need uh, to live the lives that you've called us to, but uh, don't let us fade, Father, especially in this time. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. And I just pray that you'll strengthen each and every one of us. And uh, when the opportunities are there to share your love, whether it's um, with service, for example, Ruby's Pantry or other things, Father, that, that we'll step up and we'll step in and, and be the people that will meet those needs, Lord. And strengthen us, guide us. I just pray that, Lord. Can't help but think about passages we've studied, like in Second Chronicles and seven fourteen, the idea that if we would humble ourselves, or if God's people then, I believe it's probably true now that if we'd humble ourselves and and pray, seek Your face, God, that uh, that You might lead us to turn from our wicked ways, and that uh, You would uh, hear from heaven, forgive sins, and heal land, and man, we could probably use that in a way that we don't even understand. And so help us to have a humble heart and to uh, draw our nation into, into a place of repentance. And, and I remember in Isaiah, it just was so powerful in Isaiah 60, uh, the idea that you, uh, uh, we have a darkness that covers the earth. And I was reflecting on that in San Francisco and now today in so many different ways that that darkness was a darkness Isaiah experienced, and, and he, he described it as a thick darkness, and he said it was over the people, and, uh, and yet, Lord, you rose up on uh, and appeared in glory, and, and we want nations to come to your light like Isaiah wanted uh, nations to come to your light. We want kings to see the brightness of your dawn, and and so, Father, do an amazing work in us and in this land. Uh, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chooses for his inheritance, it says in Psalms 33. And we want to have that kind of a relationship with you, God. And uh, so, Father, we just ask that you would allow uh, those who are in authority, all of our leaders in government, to, uh, to come to a place where uh, they would experience you. Help us intercede on their behalf and uh, help us to have a thankful heart for them whether we understand how they're at work or not at work in a relationship to you we know that you use kings and those who are in authority that we might live uh, peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity uh, paul told us to pray for that and to pray for our leaders in first timothy and so god we want to do that and help us to recognize that, uh, that you're the one who gives wisdom to our government leaders and boy, does, does it seem to me like they need it. And uh, we're going to learn about that in Daniel and see how in so many ways we can praise you forever and ever with wisdom and power that belong to you because you change the times and the seasons and you depose kings and you raise up others and, and you give wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. And so we ask that you would do that for our leaders today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, it is 741 and it is time to bid you farewell. I hope we see many of you tomorrow. God bless you guys. See you guys Have a great later. Day.